Welcome back to WSPR The Whisper. I'm Barrett Coppersword, live at the Wizard's Tourney. Our first duel is just getting underway as Ephazor of the Silver Flame and Zamaz the Eloquent take their places. Here we go. Oh, Ephazor is quick off the mark there. I'm seeing, yes, a fireball headed directly to Zamaz. He's brushing it off, tossing a quick acid arrow right back. Zamaz uses a staff as his focus, unlike Ephazora, who I see biting into a hot pepper she's pulled out of a pouch, using that for, yes, it's Dragon's Breath. She breathes some fire towards Zamaz. Can't say I care much for newfangled components and things. And there it is, our first counterspell, as Ephazora blocks what I think was going to be burning blood from Zamaz. She's closing in. There's a Grimwald's gray mantle dropping over Zamaz, but he lets loose with Merald's murderous mist. Name for the wizard Merald, of course. Oh, and it looks like Ephazora's dragon's breath is down. She can't concentrate in that poisonous mist. She's waving a hand, and there goes a rock she's catapulted. It strikes true. Zamaz responding with a fireball, always classic, and Ephazora is holding up her sleeve. Ah, there's a diamond sewn in. She's sending a chromatic orb, acid I believe, towards Zamaz. Bounces off of his shield spell. He's going to respond with a flight of magic missiles towards her. Brushed away with a shield of her own there. Another component coming out of a pocket. And it's Maximilian's Earthen Grasp. She's cast. Zamaz caught in the hand now, but manages to summon Mel's minute meaty. Oh, I say no cell for that language. Ephazora cursing in a most unladylike way as she misty steps away from Zamaz, still caught in that Earthen Grasp. Zamaz recovering. He's going to send a meteor, and that looks like a high higher level Scorching Ray, four orbs towards her, and the hand disappears back into the sands. Ephazora's concentration broken again. She's reaching for something. It's Obsidian, and the arena sands erupt. Zamaz knocked off balance, but recovering, sending another meteor that misses, and a firebolt that hits. Ephazora returning a freezing array, and it looks like Zamaz lost concentration. The meteors disappear. He looks stunned and throws another fireball back at Ephazoria, and there's the bell. The first round is over. Both combatants looking a bit worse for wear as they leave the sands for a brief rest period. My word, what an exhilarating opening match. We'll be back with the second round in just a few moments. Oh my god, hi, you're listening to us. Thanks. I hope you're enjoying the show. If you are, if you could leave us a five-star rating or review on the podcast platform that you prefer, it would give me, and I'm sure all of us, a massive dopamine hit. Um, and it helps spread the word about our amazing show that we're all having so much fun doing. If you could follow us on social media, we're at the Roll Report Cast on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and that's it. <laughs> and if you really like us and or you have all the money in the world, like some of our Bay Area friends do, you could support us at patreon.com slash the roll report. Now back to the show. Welcome back to the tourney and our live coverage of Wizard Duels. I'm Barrett Coppersword, your host, and we're about to start the second half of our opening duel. Ephazora of the Silver Flame seems to have won the first round by points, but her and Zamaz, the Eloquent, are scoring big spell points from our judges. They're taking their starting positions in the circles, bowing as is traditional, and they're off. Ephazora seems ready. She's casting right away, and it looks like a Shardalon stride. Flames coming from her feet, blazing speed as she has for Zamaz. Zamaz looks flustered, lifts his staff, and that's a wall of fire. A wall of fire ring-shaped around Ephazora, but she leaps right through the wall. Right through the fire, she's cast Absorb Elements, and she runs right up to Zamaz. It looks like she's patted him on the cheek, dispelling that Absorb Fire, and keeps running. Zamaz flings magic missiles at her, but once again she shields, and they're harmless. Ephazora running it again, flames scorching Zamaz as she lifts a hand, and she shocks him. A shocking grasp leaves his hair standing on end. It looks like he's he's holding a spell. Yes, Zamaz holding a spell, waiting for Ephazora to run back. She's smirking, obliges, charging back in. Zamaz releases another murderous mist and no, no, it's counterspelled. Ephazora countering the mist and hitting Zamaz with another shocking grasp before running away. Zamaz, oh, my ears. Another, oh, that's a thunderclap. Ephazora shaking her head slightly as she, what's this? She's dropped concentration. I don't believe it. She's dropped concentration on purpose. Pulled out what looks like a small cocoon and she's done it. She's done it. That's a polymorph, ladies and gentlemen. Zamaz seemed to fight it for a moment, but he's shrunk down into a beetle, a staghorn, I believe. And now it's just a waiting game. Tourney rules do include polymorph and similar. If Ephazora can maintain concentration a full minute, she'll just win by default. Zamaz, of course, several chances to break the spell. I do imagine that's a very angry beetle trundling around the sand as it is. Ephazora picking it up, lifting overhead. What's that? Oh, she's taking a bubble, I believe. Silly newfangled magical technology, something like that anyway. And there's the bell. 
Well, folks, Ifazora of the Silver Flame is our first winner of the tourney, and she's dropping her concentration on the polymorph so Zamaz the Eloquent can return to his normal form. What an exciting opener! Of course, we at WSPR... Now, I'm doing it. We at WSPR will be here all day, every day, of the tourney. We'll be back with the second match of the day between Donith Metal Braid and Kyriel Clethtenthialor shortly. Thing on? I feel like it's our first send cast again. <clears> hmm. <throat> uh, Alistair Featherbright here with an update from the tourney. As you've heard, our first duel has been completed, a thrilling match between the up-and-coming Ephazora of the Silver Flame and her opponent, the stalwart Zamaz the Eloquent. My companions and I have been attending the tourney and will be bringing you behind-the-scenes looks at both the tourney itself and our investigations here. We have noticed some small irregularities in the demiplanar construction of the stadium here, although initially seeming to be harmless. It appears that the warnings of some in the magical community about the dangerous effects of so much magic being concentrated in a demiplane might be accurate, and the barriers between the tourney and the chaotic void beyond might be wearing thin in places. Representatives of the Collegium, when made aware of our discovery, denied that the demiplane was weakening and repeated their claim that the tourney is completely safe and nothing untoward could occur. This claim standing in contrast to the disappearance of one of the pit crews for the tourney. One of the teams in charge of a preparation area, who had been administering to Ephazora of the Silver Flame, has vanished into the tourney grounds or backstage area, leaving her without support at a critical moment. Happily, my compatriots were able to step in for the missing crew and, if I'm not mistaken, help guide Ifazora to her first round victory. Additionally, I must report that a more significant breach of the demiplane occurred in our presence, and unfortunately one of the participating wizards fell prey to a strange creature that emerged from this rift before we were able to aid them. WSPR cannot yet confirm the identity of this wizard, but we can at least report that the creature was dealt with and disappeared upon its demise. Confronted with this, the Collegium representative forcefully denied that the demiplane was at significant risk. Although they agreed to bolster the magical guards at the tourney, and increase the number of mages in reinforcing the spells that created the stadium and tourney demiplane. <clears throat> in lighter news, it seems that there may be reason to hope for the rumored closer relations between the city, or the All Island Alliance, and the undersea kingdom of Notlantis. The Princess Rivulet Starfish, seventh daughter of the king, has been seen spending time at the tourney with a seashallow local, rumored to be related to an archmage or high official of the Collegium. The pair have shared snacks and cheered for Ephazora together, and indeed the young centaur in question has graciously allowed the princess to ride on his back. And now is the second ma- Huh? Oh dear, I believe we spotted one of the red robes, usually indicative of the strange cult here at the tourney. It seems to be carrying something we're in, I, I believe the term is, hot pursuit. Uh, back to you, Beric. Wait for me! Oh my, I do hope the Archmages are right. Trust the wizards, I always say. As, of course, does Wizard Weekly Duels. Having said that, it's time for our second matchup. Metal Raid. <laughs> 